All right, so now we're moving on to questions 7 through 12. And once again, the first thing that I'm going to do is, one, read the instructions. The reason I want to read the instructions is because they tell you exactly what kind of quadrilateral you have. They're telling you the quadrilateral that you have is a parallelogram. Once again, all the properties of a parallelogram apply. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and mark my diagram. So here, opposite angles we know are congruent. So already I can go ahead and answer that x is 112. We know that consecutive interior angles, so that means that angle up there and that angle up there, consecutive, means they add up to 180. So if I know that 1 is 112, then once again, all I got to do is subtract 112 from 180, and that gives me an angle measurement of 68 degrees. So here y is, we'll put it down here, 68 degrees. And one last thing, because it is a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So if this side down here is 12, then this, that means a is also 12. And if this side there is 7, the opposite side to that would also be 7, which is B. Question 8. Same thing. It's a parallelogram. So everything of the pro all the properties of parallelogram apply, which means opposite, sorry, diagonals are by, they're going to bisect each other. And so if this side is 10, that I know A is also 10. Now, here we really haven't talked about this, but if you think back, way back, here we have uh, vertical angles. And remember, vertical angles are always going to be congruent. So here, Y is 33 degrees. Opposite sides are congruent, so B is 10. And once again, here, now this, once again, it goes back to, to alternate interior angles. Because we have par parallel lines here and here, I'm going to go ahead and extend this so we can see it a little bit better. Here's a li this line parallel to this line, and we have what we call the transversal which just means it goes through both parallel lines. Then here are your alternate interior angles. And so if this angle here is 62, that means x is also 62. Moving on. Number nine. Once again, uh, it's a parallelogram, so all the properties apply. If this side is 20, that means a is also 20. If, now this one's a little bit trickier, okay? Uh, it's a little bit trickier in a sense that now we have some variables involved. So we got to do a little bit more math, simple math, but we got this. Opposite sides are congruent. So if that's 28, that means that this entire side should also be 28. But they're not asking for the side. They're asking for the value of B, sorry, B. And so if I know that the val that, that whole side is supposed to be 28, and they're giving you that side as 2b. The only thing you got to do is figure out 2 times what number is equal to 28. Or work it out. Sorry. Don't divide by b. We want to divide by 2. We want to get b by itself. And so 2, or sorry, 28 divided by 2 gives us a b value of 14. And the same thing for to find y and x. Now, we're not going to, we can do either or. The one thing we have to do first, however, is figure out, if we're going to solve for x, we have to figure out what this whole side is. So, to find that entire angle, I'm sorry, I said side, I meant angle. So to find that entire angle, we add the two angles together, so that, let's do it here. So we have 70 plus 42 gives us an angle measurement of 112. And so this that angle there and where the 4x is, 
we know that there should be supplementary. Once again, supplementary means they add up to 180. And so if I know that one of them is 112 and, and they're supposed to add up to 180, all I got to do is subtract 112 from 180, which gives us 68. Now, x is not 68. It means this whole angle here is 68. So to solve for x, all we're going to do is set up my equation, 68 equals 4x. And I'm simply going to divide by 4 on both sides. And that gives me my x value of 17. And lastly, lastly, to find y, once again, we have opposite interior angle. So this angle here is going to be opposite interior to this angle there. So because they are opposite interior, that means they're going to be congruent to each other. Since they're congruent to each other, I'm going to set up my equation of 42 equals 3y. And to solve for y, I'm simply going to divide both sides by 3. And I get a y value of 14. So I know that's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight your answers. Whoop too big of a highlight x b and we have a okay moving on so question number 10 now once again read the exercise uh, read the directions they're telling you what are the values of x and y have to be in order to make it a parallelogram so once again, in other words, we're trying to make the properties of a parallelogram apply. So we're only dealing with angles here, which means that in order for it to be a parallelogram, the opposite sides would have to be congruent to each other. And so if they're going to be congruent to each other, I do exactly that. 123 equals 3y. Simply divide both sides by 3. And I get y to be 41. So that's y. To find x, x is, well, x is in here, which is part of the angle. And so these two angles, whether it's these two or these two, they're going to be supplementary, consecutive interior, supplementary, which means that they should add up to 180 degrees. And so once again, to figure out what the angle measurement of this entire angle down here is, I simply take 180 and subtract 123 from it, and it gives me an angle measurement of 57. And so that's what I'm going to use to find my x, or to set up my equation. And so here we go. So 57 is equal to 2x minus 5. The first step is to add 5 on both sides. I'm going to run out of room. That's okay. So when we add 5 to both sides, we get 62. And then the last step is to divide by 2. And it gives me an x value. I'm going to write it up here. I'm sorry. It gives me an x value of 31. Next question. So once again, what needs to happen in order for it to make it a parallelogram? So remember, in order for it to be a parallelogram, or the properties of a parallelogram say that the diagonals are going to bisect each other. So let's set these two equal to each other. So to a different color. So we have 2x plus, I'm sorry, not plus. I just said make them equal to each other. So we set 2x equals x plus 9. We're going to solve for x. Now, because x is already at, by itself on the left side, I'm going to take this x and move it over. Now, when we move it over, I simply subtract x from both sides. 
On the right side, they cancel. On the right side, I'm left with 9. On the left side, 2x minus 1x gives me just x. So that was pretty easy. Uh, second thing, to find y, we're, we're going to approach it the same way. Opposite sides are congruent. They're giving you one side to be 3y minus 9 and the other side to be y plus 12. And so we approach it the same way. We're going to subtract y from here. And at the same time, we are going to add 9. So here that cancels, here that cancels. So now 3y minus 1y gives me 2y. And 12 plus 9 gives me 21. And so here we have to divide by 2, and we get y equals, we can leave it as a fraction, or, sorry, or we can leave, put it as a decimal, which is 10 and a half. All right, so let's finish up with question number 12. So once again, what properties need to happen in order for it to be a uh, parallelogram. So we can start with this one. Once again, here we have alternate interior angles and they should be congruent. So we set up 45 it's supposed to equal 3x, divide both sides by 3 and we get an x value of 15. Same for the y. So for the y, these two sides are supposed to be congruent. And so that's the equation that we're going to set up. 7y is supposed to equal 4y plus 21. And we're going to solve for y. Start by subtracting 4y from both sides. They cancel out. On the right side, I'm left with 21. On the left side, 7 minus 4 gives me 3. Divide both sides by 3, and we get a y value of 7.